dolce popolo tu, ne in eternum miras caris nobis. Nosotis malis offendimus, tuam Deus clemenciam. E funde nobis de super, remisor in dulcensiam. Parce domine, parce populo tuo, ne in eternum iras caris nobis. Dans tempus et captibile, da lacrimis, lavare cordis victima, quam leta durat carita. Parce domine, Parce populo tu, ne in eternum miras caris nobis. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. Oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and my sorrow, and cleanse me from all of my sin. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. My offenses truly I know them, and my sins are always before me. Against you alone have I sinned, O Lord, what is evil in your sight I have done? Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create in me a clean heart, O God, Put your steadfast spirit in my soul, casting me away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your spirit from me. <clears throat> Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give back to me the joy of your salvation. 
Let your willing spirit wear me on, and I shall teach your way to the ones who have wandered, and bring them all home to your side. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned, be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being, bless God's name. Bless the Lord, and forget not God's benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. God pardons all your iniquities and comforts your sorrows, redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful, merciful, and gracious is our God. Slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and Standing always at my side, you guard me and you lead me everlasting. Lord, you have served my heart, and you know when I sit and when I stand, 
Your hand is upon me, protecting me from death, keeping me from harm. O Lord, I know you are near, standing always at my side. You guard me from the fall and you lead me in ways everlasting. Where can I run from your love? If I climb to the heavens, you are there. If I fly to the sunrise or sail beyond the sea, still I find you there. Oh Lord, I know you are near. Standing always at my side. You guard me from the fall, and you lead me in ways everlasting. Marvelous to me are your works. How profound are your thoughts. Even if I could count them, they number as the stars. You would still be there. Yeah, oh Lord, I Standing always at my side, you guard me from the fall, and you lead me in ways everlasting.
please stand as you're comfortable. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in in you and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. 
So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. At this time, I want to invite those that are ages 6 to 9 to join Miss Jessie and Miss Mary for Sunday school in the back. Uh, students will return to this space following the sermon, and the rest of the assembly, please stand as you're comfortable. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and praise to you. Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place that he was. After this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea then. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, they were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, Jesus told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. And the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. 
Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who is called the twin, said to the fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and people had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary, Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. Those who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the others who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where I laid him? He said to Jesus, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the people said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there is already a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the people, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Lazarus, come out. It's probably for me the most memorable line in today's gospel reading. And, and not only was it an emotional and relational climax to, to this particular story today, but it's also an important turning point for the entire gospel reading. You see, up to this point in John's gospel, Reverend Dr. Jennifer Garcia Bashaw describes Jesus as aloof, as minimally impacted by others around him. But here... Here in this moment, Jesus is finally deeply moved. So much so 
that, that he ultimately weeps. And you see, from this point onward, Jesus will become increasingly more relational and affectionate. We can think of the moments ahead where Jesus will get on his knees and wash the feet of his disciples. We can think about his well-known farewell address as he says goodbye to those whom he loves. But so too, this story, this story becomes the final straw for those those religious leaders teaching Jesus throughout John's gospel. You see, from this point forward, they will relentlessly pursue Jesus' arrest and they will push for his eventual execution. You see, today's story in John's gospel is a turning point. It is what thrusts us forward towards what we will experience this next week during Holy Week. All that will proceed, all that follows, it all comes from this phrase, Lazarus, come out. And this phrase, I, I often think about how it kind of lands differently depending on the tone and the context. It, it really conveys a different emotional state. So, like, think about it. Perhaps if Jesus saying this phrase was making a strong, bold, decisive demand, he might say, Lazarus, get out here. Or Jesus might be giving an affirming invitation along the lines of, Lazarus, it's safe. You, you can come out now. Or maybe it was more of a pleading phrase, maybe hoping against all hope that Lazarus could be raised from the dead. Maybe it was something more like, Lazarus, oh, please, Lazarus, come out of the tomb. And the thing about this reading is, well, we don't know for sure exactly or what the emotion was behind it. Because, you see, what we do know is that the Greek text doesn't come to us with any punctuation. So that exclamation point following Lazarus, come out, well, it's the editor's way of telling us that this word in Greek is an interjection. That is, the word is supposed to interrupt. It's supposed to in Greek, is duro. And it's found only three other times in all of the Gospels. It's found once in Matthew, once in Mark, once in Luke, and this one time in John. And in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus uses this same word to say to a rich man that to receive eternal life, this rich person must sell all of his possessions, give the money to the poor, and to duro, to come follow him. You see, every time this word, duro, is used, it's signaling something disruptive, something transformational, something life-changing that is about to happen. And that is so true in today's text when we hear Lazarus come out. And I, as a queer person, of course, for me, this phrase come out particularly resonates in a different way. After all, the process of coming out to oneself and to others can, can be quite disruptive and transformational and life-changing, kind of all at once. It's not lost on me that this coming Friday marks the International Transgender Day of Visibility. It's a day that we observe each year that celebrates the, the joy and the resilience and the, the life-giving transformation of those who have come out as transgender. And while we might sometimes think that the trans community is small and we don't really feel the impact of those who are trans in our daily life, the Human Rights Campaign notes that there are over 1.6 million trans youth and adults in the United States alone. Now, if you're like me, that, that number doesn't really mean much. 
But when you think about the fact that this is roughly the same size as the entire population of Philadelphia, it gives a much broader understanding to how many trans individuals we're talking about here in our country. Yet nevertheless, in the United States, instead of celebrating who God has made these individuals to be, instead of showering these individuals with love and encouragement for Lazarus just come out, far too often you see policies, words, and actions all tell Lazarus, stay in the tomb already, Lazarus. You see, the number of bills seeking to block trans people's rights have increased dramatically over the past couple of years. You see, in 2023 alone so far, and what we're almost April, there have been uh, 487 bills in 46 states, including four in Illinois. Don't think we're out of, out of the weeds on this one. 487 bills in 46 states that seek to block trans people from receiving health care or education or legal recognition or just the right to publicly exist. And this, this is a growing epidemic. You see, the number of bills put out there in 2022 were twice the number from 2021. And they were eight times the amount from 2020. 2020 to 2022, an eight-fold increase and the number of these anti-trans bills. You see, it's not too far away for us to think about how those religious leaders who were reacting to the all-too-common reality that, that Jesus' gift of transformation in life, well, they instead, what they wanted to do is they wanted to capture, torture, and execute that which brings life. And so, too, here in our time, we see that again. We see people wanting to take that, that life-giving, transformational gift given by our God and instead capture it, torture it, execute it. For that is what so often people want to do in our world. Yet earlier this week, in something that, that and I didn't write this here, so this is going to get me in trouble, but in something that um, I think has come quite late in the existence of the ELCA, and always still comes with a little bit of a caveat, Finally, the presiding bishop of our denomination said something of substance to this issue. Earlier this week, the presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, reminded us that, quote, as a church, we affirm transgender and non-binary siblings as God's children who are loved unconditionally. <sighs> About time. She went on to say that the teaching of our church supports legislation and policies to protect every person's human dignity and civil rights. Thank the Lord. You see, in other words, what presiding Bishop Eaton is finally saying is to those who are oppressed by these laws, to those who forgot that they are made in God's image, and to those who feel like crawling into the tomb again, Christ says, Lazarus, come out. And you see, as a church, we, we must take seriously that Jesus calls Lazarus, our, our trans siblings, and indeed our very selves, to live fully and abundantly. You see, as a church, it is our collective pursuit to love all people and strive to bring the fullness of life to all. We're encouraged to, to be like we heard in today's reading, to be like Mary, to be like Martha, to be like those witnesses, to be like those people who saw the new life that Lazarus received. And then we are called, you and I, we as a people, we are called to love and support those people going through transitional journeys of self-acceptance and authenticity. After all, we know that the pursuit of abundant life is often not easy. And it's not always a journey that we can understand. But nevertheless, here, we are called to be the ones who cry out, Lazarus, come out. As a congregation, we say, Lazarus, 
we affirm your pronouns. Lazarus, we resist laws that destroy life. Lazarus, we are committed to building an affirming environment. Lazarus, we promise to support the laws that bring about God's vision for an abundant life. Lazarus, come out. But this story doesn't just speak truth to our LGBTQIA plus siblings. It also speaks to the various journeys of transformation. You see, things like learning to live an abundant life with a chronic condition like HIV or diabetes or COPD, well, that, that journey, that transformation, that's God saying, Lazarus, come out. Or the strength and the community gathered to walk alongside survivors from natural disasters like, like we've seen in Mississippi. Well, that is God again saying, Lazarus, come out. You see, finding a community and a path from a life of addiction, that too. That's God saying, Lazarus, come out. Freedom from the religious fundamentalism and extremism. Lazarus, come out. Moving beyond a difficult path. Lazarus, come out. You're going to do this with me. We'll keep going. Find the right career path or finding the right field of study. Oh, let's keep going. What are, what are some other ones we can think of? I didn't have enough energy behind that, and so mine are done here. How about what it's like to be a person of color and feel comfortable in spaces that are so often white? What else we got? I can't get off easy the week before Holy Week. What? We can't think of any other transformational experiences in the world? Oh. Really? Yeah. Yes, for children. So I think what I heard was children from COVID delays. Global delays. Developmental delays. Developmental delays, global delays. Yeah, finally coming to experience like they can be connected with other people in their classes, in their communities, in their churches. Lazarus, come out. Give me one more. Wow, we can think of one more. I gave you like six. Some of you afterwards are going to be like, I really hated that you did this. It's not scripted. I just was feeling like we didn't have the energy behind Lazarus come out. We can get one more. Do, 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 do. Oh, don't be a teacher's pet. Let's let somebody else do it. I know, I know. Whisper it to, whisper it to a neighbor. Well, we might not need to do a long silence, Vicar. We're reflecting now. Transformation in the world. And female professionals finally get helping to close the pay gap for women in, our, in all of our variety, various um, career paths and industries. We can think about immigrants coming to this country, right? And the ways that it feels like maybe if they're, especially if they're refugees, coming from places where they feared living and being to now being in safe places. This list, I mean, we could go on and on and on all day with ways that transformation is present. You see, over and over again, everywhere that we look, everywhere that we look, we see our God declaring time and again, Lazarus, come out. Now, now you've got it because you're like, I want him to just get down from there. But you see, this is what today's gospel is all about, right? 
It's all about how we are coming to notice God will stop at absolutely nothing to free us from the forces of oppression and death and destruction. And that our God is hopelessly, helplessly, madly in love with you, with me, with all of creation. It is God's deepest desire for us to be transformed so that we might experience this abundant life. And then, and then, here's the real kicker. As we begin to experience that transformation, as we begin to see it in the world, in our daily lives, in people's lives around us, well then, we are empowered to have um, that opportunity to bring new life to all of those around us. We are encouraged to stand up for those on the margins, to advocate for transformation, and to financially support those in need. And all of that, all of that work that we do, the practice that we did today of helping to identify transformation in our lives and our community and other people's lives, all of it, we do that, we come here we experience that all so that we might embrace Christ's words. Lazarus, come out. Amen. Please stand as you're comfortable.
sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church. Deepen our partnerships with our companion churches around the globe, especially in the Czech Republic, Poland, and Slovakia, and bless the work of missionaries who accompany them. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world and restore ecosystems in need of healing. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air all around. Merciful God, hear our prayer. You redeem the world and its peoples. Free us from systems of oppression. Unbind nations and societies from the sins of racism, sexism, transphobia, and homophobia. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Merciful God, hear our prayer. You weep when we weep those who grieve or who are troubled by illness. You hear us when we call to you. Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. Merciful God, hear our prayer. You are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints who now live in your eternal love. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. At this time, let us share the piece. Um, if you are in person, please be mindful of the social stickers. And if you're online, maybe drop something in the chat. Let's pass the piece. And once you've had a chance to pass the peace, you may be seated. And I invite any children who are here today, you can come on forward. I've got some fun stuff for us to look at and some little goodies to give you. So come on down. We're going to take a look at what we've got here. See if I can hide it for a few moments. Want to come down here, Will? All right. Well, it's good to see you all today. So in today's gospel reading, we had the story of Lazarus. Did you hear about Lazarus probably when you were downstairs? Yeah. And do you remember what happened to Lazarus? Yeah. He, yeah, he died. He passed away. And do you remember Jesus' reaction to that? Yeah. What did, what did Jesus do, Donovan? He felt horrible, and he was crying. Who's cried before? I admit it. I've cried before. What kind of things make us sad or hurt us, maybe make us want to cry? Or other people? Yeah, Donovan. Uh, losses? Yeah. So maybe if we lose some, maybe a pet dog, right? And so that can make us really sad. What else can make us really sad? Yeah, Donovan. Physically get hurt or something? Yeah, physically get hurt or something. And that's what I have here a little bit to look at. What is this? First aid kit. First aid kit. Who's, heard, who's seen a first aid kit before? 
Yeah? What, do you, what, is, what is inside a first aid kit? Yeah, what's inside a first aid kit? Band-Aids. Band Let's see what I've got in here. Let's look, oh, I got a whole bunch of Band-Aids here. What kind of Band-Aids are these ones? Felix, can you see what that says down there? Strawberry shortcake band-aids. Those are pretty cool. You want to see those? You see all the different characters on there? How about these ones? What do these ones say? Uh, Jesus. Jesus band-aids. I know. I mean, it wouldn't be church if we didn't have Jesus band-aids here, right? And so, uh, and then we've got all some plain ones here and stuff like that. Well, today during the story, one of the things that I think Jesus reminds us of is that it is okay at times for us to be sad and to cry, right? When we lose somebody, maybe when we get hurt, maybe when we miss someone, maybe if you go to the doctor and you get a shot or a vaccine, right, in your arm, maybe that sometimes the pinches and kind of hurts. And that's, that's okay because that is all part of being human. Sometimes we cry just like Jesus. And just like we cry, Jesus cries, and like Jesus cries, sometimes we cry too. And that is a reminder of how much God loves us. Because even God, even Jesus, cries sometimes. And that's okay. That's okay, because God is still with us, and God still loves us. And to help, us, help remind us of God's love, I have got a coloring sheet here, if you'd like it. And can anybody see? What, do you, what does this look like? Felix or Tycho or Will, do you see what's here? This is somebody, can you see somebody crying? There's a tear there. And Donovan, what does that say up top? Uh, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Very good. So this is a reminder. Did you know that Jesus wept is the shortest verse in the whole Bible? Did you know that? Shortest verse in the whole Bible. And so um, as a reminder today, I want to give you one of these coloring sheets. And you're welcome to color it. And maybe if you color it today before you leave and you want to... Uh, keep it in the, in the church, we can put it on the bulletin board in the fellowship hall, and then it can help remind people that it's okay sometimes to feel sad, and that God still loves us even when we feel sad. All right? Well, thanks for joining me today, and you can head back to your seats. Let's see if I can get strawberry shortcake back in here. There we go. Well, the, the strawberry shortcake reference is probably, I'm dating myself, aren't I, with that? I don't even know if that's, was that even a movie, TV show, book, cartoon? Cartoon? Okay. See? There we go. I don't even remember anywhere. Well, whether you've seen Strawberry Shortcake or not, we are so good um, to have, to, so glad to have you here at Wicker Park Lutheran Church today. If it's your first time visiting with us, I just want to draw your attention to the link in the QR code, either on your screen or in your bulletin. Um, that'll take you over to a digital Connect card, or if you're here in person, there is a physical Connect card in the pew in front of you. We'd love for you to fill that out. Let us know that you're a first time visitor, because we'll follow up with you, offer to chat a little bit more about your spiritual and religious journey and how that might intersect with ours. Um, as a congregation and how we can journey together so that we can continue to remind people of God's transformation um, in our lives and in our world. After service today, um, I invite you to join us in the fellowship hall for a time of uh, fellowship and coffee and treats and goodies. To get there, you're just going to walk through any of the doors in the back, make a left and keep walking, um, and feel free um, to reach out to somebody new. Ours is an ever-changing community, so don't be shy in um, introducing yourself to someone today. So too, after service today, um, we will also have um, Bible study, and it's going to be that first reading, which is super cool and fun and exciting, and we'll also hear at the Easter Vigil, is the one that we're going to dive in today, um, Ezekiel and Dry Bones. And let me tell you, I've seen some of the preparations Vicar did in the other room. You're going to want to be there for it because there's a lot of fun, exciting stuff happening with that. So um, we'll make a small announcement after some time of fellowship if you want to join us at the far end of the fellowship hall for that time of Bible study. So too, as we're continuing our Lenten journey, we are now officially 73% of the way through our Lenten project. And we've got a little bit of work to do. We're just about at the $2,000 mark. So we're like... 
49% of the way to $4,000 and 25% of the way to $8,000. And if you remember, $4,000, we're gonna have a big, huge kind of like, you can think of like a sleepover party um, in, the, um, in the fellowship hall after church on the, the second uh, Sunday after Easter. So not the first one following Easter, but the second one. Um, if we get the $6,000 mark, then we're all gonna have a big pajama party here. I'm gonna wear pajamas during service. Vicar, you're all invited to wear your pajamas to service. And if we get the $8,000 mark, we're gonna do all of those things, plus have a great pillow fort up here for the kids to play in um, during our uh, children's message. So, I'm gonna sweeten the deal here a little bit. We had a very generous donor come forward to us and say that they are going to match $2 for every $1 given for the next $3,000 given. What that means, we raised $3,000, we hit it all. We hit it all. So we can do that. We got two weeks, $3,000. This is possible. This has happened over and over again. So if you haven't yet, give to the Lenten Project and your $1 turns into three, your 100 turns into 300. How cool is that? So um, go ahead and you can either give electronically, you can give in the plate, which mark Lenten Project on an envelope, or you can donate any of our ministry partners, that includes things like Lutheran Disaster Response, and they are on the ground responding to the devastation we've seen in Mississippi, um, and uh, things like our uh, Metropolitan Chicago Synod, who's working for church plants and supporting congregations across the city, but also across the globe. So donate to any of those ministry partners, and it counts towards our Lenten project. All right, three more announcements, and then we're moving on. One. Easter Lilies, um, Easter Lily sponsorships. We've got one week left. Next Sunday is our last week. Um, $20 or more is the suggested donation. You can give um, in the plate. Just make sure you write your name on uh, an envelope and put Easter Lily on it. We'll follow up with you to get um, some more information about your sponsorship, or you can do that electronically. Two, next Sunday is our egg hunt. We have like five hundred eggs filled with candy and fruit snacks and all sorts of goodness. You're going to want to be here next Sunday um, and join us after um, church. Invite friends, invite family for that egg hunt. Hopefully if it's nice out, we'll be outside in the gathering garden um, and on the south side of the church here. The third and final announcement is you might see in your bulletin that there is an insert. And this insert is um, from um, Partners for Sacred Space Places. This is that consulting firm that we talked about hiring to do our financial feasibility study. This is a letter from the executive vice president um, from um, that uh, organization. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be reaching out to a variety of different community partners, um, individuals in our congregation, new members, old members, former members, uh, top tier donors, big in people who are invested in um, uh, leading our congregation. And we're going to invite you um, to have a 45, 50 minute conversation with that firm to just so that they can get to know a little bit more and we can best see how we're positioned for that large scale, eventually a whole $3 million campaign to redo the whole basement, make the whole thing, uh, whole building ADA accessible um, and really enliven not only our ministry, but our work in our community. And so I would invite you to be thinking about that, be aware of those emails that are to come, and to check out that letter um, from um, the Partners for Sacred Places in your bulletin. With all of that said, um, now we have the opportunity to um, give of our offerings. Um, as we come to this communion table where we know all are welcome, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, you are welcome to this communion table. So too we can respond to that gift that is given um, by helping to support our ministry partners. For a portion of all that we receive in our plate goes to our ministry partners, and then now you can even give more to our ministry partners during this Lenten project. And so I invite you to reflect on the gifts that you're giving in our offering plate and the ways that it's bringing about transformation in our little corner of the world here in Wicker Park, but also across the globe. As we, as a congregation, not only with our words and our actions, but with also with our pocketbook, our finances, our bank account, say the truth that Jesus says today. And that is, Lazarus, come out. I invite you to reflect on that today as we give of our gifts. Come to me, all you weary, with your 
burdens and pain. Take my yoke on your shoulder and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and your soul will find rest. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We shall rise again on the last day with a faithful rich and Please stand as you are comfortable. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks 
broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered by the Spirit's motherly care, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Please be seated.
please stand as you're comfortable. As we depart, receive this blessing. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you on this Lenten journey. Amen. Serve in love. Thanks. Thanks.